Welcome everybody on to a new lecture here on our Discord channel. Uh, we are doing it like twice or three times a week on our Discord channel for artists called Valhalla for Artists. Uh, yeah, I have a bunch of people right now in chat with me. There's like, I don't know, 30 of them there. So for people who are watching this on YouTube, beware that we do that every week and I try to answer and do my lecture material around questions of my students that are, you know, the most, you know, concerning to young artists who are trying to break into visual development industry. And today we have a really cool topic. Sorry, guys, I'm going to hide you, so say goodbye. <laughs> uh, today we have a, a really exciting topic, honestly. Uh, it's uh, one of my favorites, to be honest. It's personal projects. Uh, we're going to cover a few things today, uh, how to start your project, how to think about your personal project, when to do it, and why do it, right? And we're going to also go over some pressing problems that every single one of you actually encounter day to day, okay? So let's start in the beginning. Let's start in the beginning. All of you right now, experiencing one problem and the problem that one problem is this right how do i get a job how do i get good at art how do i improve and what do you all do well you study right you study and you study and you do and you do gesture drawings and and you do environment design um you know studies and you do character design studies and you do anatomy studies and value and all of that but what's the main problem What's the main problem? Well, the main problem is that you never apply your knowledge that you actually learn while you do the studies, or very rarely. Why is that so, right? Right? Why do you prefer to do, you know, extra five study days and, and you're so productive at it, when it, but when time comes to actually implement everything into your personal project, you know, you, you freeze, you don't know what to do. You don't develop your own artistic voice. And even though it's important to study, but applying what we've learned is crucial to your art career. And if you don't apply what you've learned, well, you're not really an artist. You're a printer, a copier, or a professional student. And how do we fix that, right? So we have to understand that studying, right? Studying is easy. It's very easy. Why? Well, because objective, objectives are clear and outcome is super satisfying, right? You start doing a gesture drawing, you have a bunch of little spinkadoodles on your, on your sheet, right? Um, right? Or if you do a, let's say, a plein air study, you have a reference and you just copy it and then at the end you get a nice result, right? Well, everything is good when you study. You know, it's good to study, it's good to learn, right? But if you don't apply it, if you don't apply it to your personal work, then you become a professional, professional student forever. And I see this syndrome in many, many people. I started my career with, I don't know, four to five people, and two or three out of them, they, they, they got the, you know, the forever student syndrome, always studying, always trying to find new things, new tutorials, and learning, learning, learning. But why, right? Why are they doing it? Why are we so afraid to start our personal pro project? Well, because again, studying is easy, because objectives are clear and outcome is super satisfying, but personal work is precious and we're afraid of messing it up. So if we don't start, there's no failing, and your brain tricks you into studying some more, right? Because, you know, why do the important thing if you can just, you know, productive, productively procrastinate with studying, right? So before we, you know, get into the pipeline of, you know, how to actually finish your personal work, how to actually start it, you know, let's talk about benefits of having a personal project and how can we link it to our forever study syndrome, right? And, you know, guys, I encourage you to take notes because if you do, your life is going to be easier and then you can actually not just listen to this, but uh, apply important things that 
resonate with you personally, right? So I really encourage you just, you know, take a little piece of paper or open a Photoshop file and just write things for yourself uh, that are important to you, right? So number one, benefits of having a personal project, right? First of all, it provides context because when you're studying without a context, it's just useless information. Imagine just, you know, theory crafting how to build a rocket without building a rocket or theory crafting how to, you know, fix your car without having a car. So when you are studying, right, study without context, it's just studying. It's just, it's just death. It's, it's horrible. Don't do that, right? Because you're learning tools, you're learning techniques, and you're learning important fundamentals that then need to act as building bricks, right? Building blocks that will construct your vision and will, you know, will bring your creative voice from your brain onto a piece of canvas, right? Right. So when we have a personal project, you know, let's, let's have a, let's, let's say, let's say for me it was Lumber Saga. It's my personal Viking project, Lumber Saga, right? Um, and when I was when I was creating it, actually I had a reverse problem. I never studied, or I guess I studied in my way the correct way, which is my ideas were so precious to me, and then I wanted to get them out of my head right here, right now, that when I painted them, they looked horrible. But every time I saw a tutorial, every time I did, let's say, a little study of a frame, or I watched a movie, every time I, I learned a new piece of information or found a new tool, I would apply it right away into the painting that I was working on. So your personal project, let's just name it personal project. It's going to be PS, personal or P PP, <laughs> PP, personal project. Oh man. Uh, so when we have <laughs> a personal project, it provides us with context. Everything that we learn gets applied into it right away, right? For example, let's say I'm, I'm drawing a bunch of Vikings in my frame. And then I watched a little YouTube video somewhere online, right? About dynamic poses or anything like that. I could go and do a bunch of dynamic poses, just, you know, just, just for fun if I wanted to, right? But what's, what's the point? Why? Why do that? If I can just right away apply this knowledge into something that I want to work right here, right now. Again, studying, it's like reading a manual on how to do stuff and acquiring tools and then not actually working on your own car right and just studying for the sake of studying and that is evil and that is horrible and you if you get stuck in this loop you have to get out of it right away because when we get hired on a project we get hired to bring in a new perspective our own creative uh, artistic voice right and we will filter our clients projects through our own unique experiences and through our own for all unique perspective again, right? And if you're studying forever, you're not doing that. You're not filtering the information through yourself. You're just repeating what other people do. And in the beginning, when you're just starting out and you're a little baby artist and you're going, it's important to do that because you need to uh, build up your visual library and get all the rhythms in. Probably what this, oh, sorry, blah, 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 blah. Who this, lecture, who this lecture is actually uh, targeted towards is people who already had a pretty good beginning and they're already, they're ready to jump into their personal stuff, right? But they're afraid to do, to do that leap, right? This lecture is for you guys, okay? Right? Don't be afraid. And I'll, uh, I'll explain why. So let's recap a little bit, right? So the benefits of a personal project is this, right? It provides context you start and apply everything in, in an actual productive way. You learn much faster and knowledge stays in you for longer, right? Because you're not just theory crafting why this tool is really important for you, right? You actually have a context to apply it right away, right? You do an environment and then you're like, you know what? I, st I suck at environments. Let me do a study. 
you learn a bunch of stuff or you saw something on YouTube, the knowledge gets applied right away into your project. So, uh, yeah. And another thing is, when you have a personal project, every time an inspiration hits you um, or some kind of interesting, you know, life event or experience, you can always apply it into your own personal work. Like you can apply it into your world, your characters or story of your project. Again, it provides you with context. All the information around you gets filtered out and applied. You get inspired and you capture those ideas. Those are not just, this is not, not just random pirate dude, you know, who has, I don't know, a machine gun a hand, right? As a character design, right? That pops into your head. You think, hmm, where does this guy fit into my overall world, right? What's his backstory? And then this guy, you know, came into your life because you were either very angry or really sad or something like that. And, you know, this character was inspired by emotion. And you can right away apply it into your own personal project, right? And then when you have a personal project, it, it, it trains a different skill set of raising the right questions, okay? Right? When you have a personal project, you're actually practicing to raise correct questions and then searching for the answers in practice and studying, not the, not the other way around, right? Because most of, you, most of you guys think that I'm not ready yet. I need to study first to then start my personal project, right? But I think this is completely wrong. Why? Well, are you really that excited about other people's voices and other people's, you know, ideas? In my opinion, artists have to be some kind of, you know, well, precious for their own ideas. They want to, they need to cherish it like little babies, you know, and every single one of you should consider themselves as their favorite artist because only you can create stuff for you, right? When you're looking at Instagram, art station, anything in the world, what do you do? You pick and choose what you love, but there's no perfect combinations of everything that you love. And the, the perfect combination of everything that you love is you, right? So I always suggest to my students is do personal project first, and then through studying, experience, you know, hard work and everything else, right? Use those as tools, right? The big why, your vision. And if you don't have a vision, and if you don't have a creative voice, well, I'm gonna tell you this, it's gonna be really, really hard to stand out in this creative industry. Because most of my friends who have a job as visual development artists, or in that regards, in, in, in any creative field on a professional level, usually they have they they do art professionally so they can continue doing personal art so they can continue to evolve their personal uh, creative voice and become the best versions of themselves as artists right so again you have context with a personal project when inspiration hits you and you can apply you know it right away into your personal project you actually practice to raise correct questions and your education goes 500% faster, right? Because when you're just studying a big list of, oh, you should, you should study this and this and this and this, like, you know, uh, you know kind of like <laughs> how to art, art list of studies, right? But the thing is, it's like studying in a math class. When you're sitting down and then you have some kind of like weird geometry stuff, over here and you have no idea how you're gonna apply it in real life like is it actually useful I remember sitting in my math classes bored out of my mind actually I have no idea how I finished high school right because well actually I know I have another friend he was also name was Misha and he was really good at math so he was doing everything for me and then and in exchange I was his friend <laughs> yeah not a very good uh, not a very symbiotic more of a a p p parasite uh, uh, <laughs> kind of friendship but uh, thank you, Misha. If you're watching this, you're the best dude. Uh, because I didn't know how to apply this into my life. And what did I do on math classes? Well, I drew because I'm like, you know what? I'm actually interested in that. So when you have a list of things that you're studying, it's like sitting in a math class, absolutely useless if you don't apply it. Again, you're a copier or a printer, 
while you do studies without context. You are a professional student while you do it. And my job is to lead you to be a professional artist, a creator, you know, a voice that stands out from other people. Okay? All right. Are you with me, guys? I hope you are. Right? So you actually practice to raise correct questions, right? When you are um, doing your personal projects. And then you search for the answers in practice and studying. Not the, way, not the, not the other way around. Right. And then, right, when you're doing a personal project, that's the closest thing to working in the industry. Why? Because you're all, you are your own art director, right? You are your own your art director. You are your own art lead. You are your own story writer. And you basically wear many, many, many hats, which imitates pipeline, right? And then if you guys want to know more about Pipeline, I have a video here on YouTube. It's called How Animation Industry Works or something like that. It's in my art camp. So maybe I'll link it down in the description or it will pop up somewhere off the top. I don't know. We'll see. But you wear different hats when you do your personal project. Uh, and yeah, you're, you're mimicking real life working environment and practices. So when the client comes, the only thing that changes, you get paid. And you already know the pipeline and how you do stuff. So the only thing that is going to change is when the client comes, you're like, you're like, first of all, it's going to be much, much easier because you're going to have <laughs> actual 10 people working with you and you're going to take only one, you know, you're going to take, you're going to take only one part in the pipeline, which is going to be like color script, you know, visual development or environment or character art and all of that stuff, right? And you just get paid. So that's another benefit of having a personal project. Um, yeah, and another thing that is very important that I see a lot, I see a lot in especially student portfolios is, well, client, well, what client sees in your portfolios, guys, it's clients see a student portfolio and a unique creator, creator portfolio, and they almost always will hire a unique artist's voice over just, you know, master of fundamentals because if it's just pure fundamentals and then you're just going to get frozen over a simple design task and you don't know how to apply them again you can become a great maybe instructor at school if you, like again i'm not shaming i'm not shaming love for study i'm not shaming it at all there's people who dedicate their lives just to that's their purest artistic form but this is a visual development uh place right Everything animation, everything story, everything unique artistic voice of you guys. And that's my job here is to provide structure and inspiration and guidance for you to, you know, get stories out of you because you guys are the next workers in the industry. You guys are the next Pixar. You are, guys are the, the, the next Disney, all that stuff, right? All right. So that's kind of like the negative aspects of it. And... The main, again, the main reason is to have a personal project. It provides context. It answers so many questions. You should do it. You should do it. You should do it. You should do it. You shouldn't even question that. Okay. I think in, in your lives, 80% should be your personal voice as an artist and what I stand for, what story I want to tell, what characters do live in my universe and all that stuff. And 20% study, in my opinion. That's my humble opinion. That's how I did stuff. Okay. All right. So the main reason, again, why you're not starting a personal project is not because you're bad or you're procrastinating or anything like that. Well, it's because you're afraid. Because personal project is, you know, so precious. It's, 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 this, it's this thing that, you know, you're striving for, that you think it's going to be so special and, and awesome. It's just shining over there. Oh, and you don't want to touch it. You don't want to ruin it. Because if you don't begin, you can't fail, right? If you, if you don't start, you know, you cannot mess it up. And it's so precious to you guys that instead of starting, being productive and actually failing in a good way at your project, you're like, you know what? I need, I'm not ready yet. I am, I am not ready yet. And <laughs> as, um, me and my wife, we, we're going to have children at some point. And a lot of people who say, 
who have children is like you're not ready to have to to have a baby <laughs> and your own personal project is like having a baby in my opinion right i have a lot of i am a unofficial uncle to a lot of little cute uh creatures uh my friends a lot of my friends have babies and uh yeah, and I'm gonna tell you this. Yeah, you're never ready because uh, it's a, it's a lot of responsibility. It's a lot of, you know, it's it's a lot of hard work, but it's very 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 rewarding when you invest into your own projects and if you look at it as a baby, basically. Okay. So number one thing: do not be afraid to start um, on your on your project on your creative journey because. Well, you are robbing yourself of years and years of amazing, amazing experience. Okay. All right. So how to actually start a personal project and actually finish it. So number one thing is the big why. All right. And now it's going to lead us to another concept and that's called justifiable pain. What is justifiable pain? Well, Personal project is painful, it's hard, you're going to be very vulnerable while you do it, especially if you're going to really filter everything through yourself and through your perspective on life, right? And at the end, you have to understand why you're doing it. Uh, for many people, there could be many whys, but in my opinion, the number one, because you guys want to get a job, is I am actually practicing my job, right? I'm actually practicing my job. I'm getting industry experience, right? I am working on a project without pay, but I'm already a professional because I'm starting. Because you have to understand, guys, when you're just studying, you are a student. You're learning tools to start doing the job. You can be a professional artist who does the job, you can just be really bad at it and you can learn more tools, right? In my opinion, more experience you have in actual, you know, creative battle, better you are. Because again, you can, you can prepare for, <laughs> I don't know, sky jumping by imagining it many, many times. You can, you can, you can prepare doing boxing in shadow box all your life, right? But then there's nothing like actually jumping out of the plane and actually like go and spar with, with an actual person with actual gloves and, and experience the hits. There's nothing more important than personal experience with your own personal project because it's the closest thing to the industry you will ever get, okay? If you know about how the pipeline works. And don't worry about that. I have all the lectures on this YouTube channel to uh, fix that, right? Right? So the second one is... For me, it's uh, right. It's it's how I see the world. It's it's coping, right? Because every artist should be, as I say, naked as a <laughs> naked as a as as a tooth nerve, or uh, or a piece of grass, you know, flailing in the wind, right? You experience life on a different level, on different emotional level, and you. And you understand people's pain and you're probably more empathetic and then you are also uh or empathic uh and you're also like you understand people's yeah you understand people's pain you understand injustice more and and, and things just you know they jab you under your rib much much you know harder and more painful than other people can you relate right so coping with the real world filtering everything and then and then so, for example, let me give you an example. Vincent van Gogh. Do you know Vincent van Gogh? The dude who, uh, you know, chopped his ear off, as people say. <laughs> um, that was a man full of pain and tragedy and mental illness, and no one understood him, and he only had one friend who was his brother, and I think another friend who was like a prostitute or something like that who posed for him. And even though he was depressed and, you know, um, and, and life wasn't really good for him. What did he do? People say that Van Gogh's you know, artwork is like the most, he, he is the most expressive guy color-wise out there. And if you look at his palettes, they're rarely depressing. He channeled his, his sadness 
into something beautiful. He used his art to cope with the existing world, things he didn't agree with or he agreed with. And that's what we should do with our own projects, right? Uh, some people, uh, well, for example, for me, I'm creating my Lumber Saga project. And my, the big why is when people look at my paintings, I want them to experience the same emotions as I do. And maybe, you know, if I my storytelling is better, they can, you know, maybe answer some questions for themselves or raise some questions for themselves and maybe make their life a little bit better. But again, that's more towards my animation project than my actual artwork. But that is my big why. And what is your big why? Right, because again, in my opinion, art is very important, and it should be very personal, and it should well, you should have something to say while you do it, and you need to understand why you're putting yourself through all this pain. Because I'm gonna tell you this, guys, right now, right? If there's there's much easier ways to earn money in the world, okay? There's much easier paths with much more to offer monetary uh, gain-wise, right? So the only reason why you should be in this lecture or actually pursuing art in general is because for you, art is living and, and, and painting and creating is like, is, like, is, like, is like air. You breathe it, you live it, that's who you are, not because it's prestigious, not because it's super awesome, even though it is awesome, and I think to some degree it could be prestigious, but those are the wrong reasons why people come. So... The big why, the big why is important. And if you answer that before you do your personal project, then you're gonna be set up because why? Because you need to convince your brain why you're going through this fire and electricity and, and spikes and pain in general, right? And your brain's like, oh, right? Why are you doing that? And if the why is good enough and you always remind yourself of that why, the personal projects are more bearable because you have context, right? And like, you know, you can be like, I'm doing my personal projects because I want to have my portfolio ready in a year because I'll get a job and I'll be happy and I'll work at Disney or Pixar or something like that. That could be your why, right? It doesn't have to be so like, oh, high and mighty and philosophical. This is just my approach and that's what makes me happy in my art career, okay? So, right, that's the big why. But to actually start it, and when you know your big why, it's very simple. You make it personal. You take all of your emotions, memories, life in general, right? You make your personal project almost as an extension of yourself. And it has to say something, right? Uh, and number one rule when, you, when you're doing your personal project is you are making it for you. You're not making it for other people. You are solving your own problems. You are dealing with your other trauma or emotions or inspirations or memories. You're filtering everything through your through yourself and you're creating a project for yourself. And the, the main question is like, the best question to uh, question yourself is, what would I enjoy looking at? What emotion would I would want to experience through this project, through this painting, through this or that? Right? And then you have to make a habit right, of thinking of it in that way. Okay? Make a habit of connecting to your images in your head on an emotional level. Okay? And every, like, I remember when I was in school and like creatures, oh, creatures, see already, uh, <laughs> associative, associative thinking is so, is so strong in me. Uh, teachers, not creatures, teachers would yell at me and say, you know, you shouldn't draw, and and then like they would they would actually like crumple my, my my paintings and put it in the trash can and say you're so you know you're a smart kid why you're not working all of that so all this trauma and negative stuff I would just go and you know and I, I would put it in my sketchbook and, and uh, actually in my child in my childhood I had a 500 page sketchbook that was glued out glued together out of out of other sketchbooks. Uh, and every time something happened, good or bad, inspiring or demotivating, you have to understand that that's energy, right? You can use it in a frustrating way. Give up, stop doing everything, you know, start, you know, watching Netflix and just procrastinate all your life. Or you can make a habit of anything that comes your way, any emotion, 
negative or positive is gonna like negative emotion, whoa, positive emotion, whoa, you know. You're like Kung Fu Panda gonna redirect it into your art. Okay? And make a habit out of it. Make a habit out of it. You guys with me? You hear what I'm saying? Does it resonate? I hope it does. Okay? Okay, so you got the idea, right? You got excited. You're ready to redirect the negative and positive juju and all your life experience and memories into something productive, which is your art. You get it, you're excited. You have an idea in your head, right? And you go home and you eat dinner and you watch TV and you go in the shower and then you're like, what was that idea? Can't remember it. <laughs> Can you relate? Okay. I'm going to say the nasty sentence again. Grab your ideas by the balls. Okay? I'm sorry if that offends anybody, but that's the best, <laughs> the best sentence I ever came up with, and that's the rule that I live by. Okay? Collect those ideas in one place and make a habit out of that too. Okay? So every time you see this in your life and you have some kind of a strong resonating emotion, strong resonating idea that really excites you because you know you know your big why and then that's how you live your life you, you just filter everything through yourself and then you use that energy for your ideas for your paintings right and then you collect all those ideas into a sketchbook or a phone i don't know apple notes if you want to i i personally do everything in a sketchbook sometimes in apple notes i have a kind of like a little tab that's, that's called painting ideas and like I would write down a few sentences, maybe sketch something out. And sometimes I will go back into it and be like, what the hell was I thinking about? I have no idea what this means. I will have like sentences like red, dwarf, you know, you know, crocodile together in an awesomeness. And, and I'm like, but over time you'll be better and better at capturing your ideas in a text form and on a fast sketch form. So then you can pick it up that idea at any time point of time right so again resonating emotionally capturing ideas in one place that is accessible right have your sketchbook have your phone nearby every time right famous comedians musicians they they have a nightstand thing so when they wake up they can write things down do you capture your ideas right you personally do you capture your ideas day to day or do you let them flee how many great ideas did you let go that you know you'll never get getting back and if you will get a habit of capturing them imagine how many great paintings can you know grow out of it just like a like a like a little flower okay all right what's our next point <sighs> okay you have an idea now what <laughs> well it's time to create we are not artists if we don't paint and ideas are worthless if we don't execute on them. On one hand, ideas is the most valuable thing that humanity ever, uh, you know, came up with, right? Ideas, like everything around you that you see, your laptop, your computer, your, you know, your, um, I don't know, your table happened as an idea, right? But then that idea connected with action, and then when you connect things with action, it goes into material world, right? So you might have the best new Avatar movie idea. You might have, you, you you could have any idea you want, but if you don't if you don't have action, and if you don't actually act on upon it, it's never gonna go into a material world, and people will never see it. And you are not an artist; you are a great thinker. And maybe you can be an art director and then, you know, maybe if you're lazy and you don't want to paint, you can go and, you know, pay people to, uh, you know, get your idea into life. Those people are called directors. Those people called, you know, filmmakers sometimes who hire artists to do that. So you have to, again, understand, are you really an artist? Do you, are you really love creating with your own hands and then living through your painting and see what comes on the other end? Or, do you, or you're just a thinker who likes to think about those things, that maybe you should be a director. Things to think about, all right? Okay, so you have an idea. Now what? It's time to create. Overcoming fear of starting, right, is really important. 
It's absolutely useless to be afraid of failing, okay? No real mistakes, there's no real progress. Because if you don't make a mistake, you cannot fix it. And if you cannot fix it, you cannot find the right brush stroke, okay? Uh, in my sketchbook not too long ago, I had, I had this system. It's called brush stroke, brush stroke, puzzle, solve, uh, solve, flow. What does it mean? Well, a painting is basically, you do a brush stroke down. If you don't like it, you erase it and you find the one that you like. You keep it. You keep another one, you keep another one, you keep another one until a puzzle emerges. You start solving that puzzle and that gets you in a flow state. When you solve the puzzle completely and then you render the painting completely, you have a finished painting. If, you, if you're a professional artist, you know that. And if you look at professional artists, you think, oh, they're so fast, they make no mistakes. No, they make more mistakes than you. They make them faster, they fail faster, they fail upwards and they fix them faster. So there's an illusion of really, really fast progress. But in reality, what they're doing, they're failing really, really fast, correcting it. And that creates an illusion of, you know, perfect pipeline. And of course, over time, you'll not do the same mistakes and you will get better at your craft. And that's logical, right? But without failing, there's no growth and there's no real improvement. Real mistakes, real failure lead to real progress. If you're gonna fail a little, you're gonna have a little progress. <laughs> right. Uh, so that deals with a with a fear of starting out. Okay. Again, if you don't fail, guys, you never do a real progress. Okay. So fail faster, fail upwards. Right. Then you create time frames and come up with a victory plan. Victory plan is super important because if you don't have boundaries, right? And boundaries are good. Why? Because they free us from endless possibilities syndrome, right? <laughs> because when you have endless time and endless possibilities, you, you don't do all of them. Like when you, have, you, when you have a road ahead of you and all of them can lead to like amazing things, right? That you really, really want, right? Maybe. Uh, it's not necessarily money or prestige, but you know what I'm saying, right? You will get confused and you will take, well, you'll take none of them. But then if you come up with a victory plan and you're like, you know what? All those roles are awesome, but I'm taking this one for now. Well, you can actually go through every road much faster by making a decision by going here and saying, oh, not it. Oh, not it. Hmm. Not it. Okay. You need to commit to one thing and stick, it, stick with it for a really long time and see where it leads. And if you don't like it, you can backtrack and then go to another road, okay? So create time frames, actual time frames. Whoops, sorry guys. Actual time frames uh, and a victory plan. Why you're doing it, how you're gonna achieve it, and in what time, all right? It has to be very, very, very specific. More specific, a uh, better chance of winning you have, okay? Super specific. Uh, I'm gonna start working on this project today. And one second, I need to get some water. Uh, I'm gonna work on this project today for three hours. Here's how I'm gonna do it. And you write down a victory plan, break things into digestible chunks. And I like to work with Pomodoro. 25 minutes you work, five minutes you think. 25 minutes you work, five minutes you think. 20 minute break after you have three or four Pomodoros, do another four, see where you're at, go for a walk, for a nap lunch break, go back in the evening, work without the timer while watching some kind of movie, maybe some kind of stream. But again, in your day, you need to have at least four hours of focused work, right? At least four hours, because if you want to go anywhere with your art in general, it's about consistency over a long period of time. I don't care if you were, I don't know, super productive 16 hours once a month, right? I can work out for 16 hours one day and then not work for that. Like my body will not adjust. If I'm going to do three push-ups a day, every day for a year, that's going to be better than I'll do a hundred and something in one day. My body will not adapt. Okay. We are, our muscle is our brain. Our muscle is our willpower and our discipline. Right. And when we create boundaries, right. And we create a victory plan in, in, in a, you know, in a condensed time frame you are 
even though you it feels like you are robbing yourself of some freedoms, but you are creating ultimate freedom. Discipline is the ultimate freedom of do what you want because when you have endless possibilities, it's like, you know, when you have a free day and you think you're going to do so many things today and you watch Netflix and play video games and the day is over and you've done nothing. Well, it's because you can do everything at the same time. And, and in the words of uh, the most famous, one of the most famous super villains, you know, if everyone is super, no one is super, right? When every minute is a free, mo a free minute to do anything and you, you can do anything, you'll do nothing, right? So you need to really precise, just like a sniper rifle, what I'm doing today and I'm doing it, okay? So, and another rule for your personal project, it should not be easy because easy equals boring, but it shouldn't be too hard because too hard equals frustration and then you give up, all right? So find that, you know, balance, that, that's, you know, that sweet spot where you're going to be, uh, what are you going to be doing? It's, 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 it's a sweet spot for your, like, your comfort zone with enough of a challenge in it. So you still feeling like you are progressing and doing something, right? And at the same time, you're not completely in your comfort zone and you're still learning. So it's a perfect combo. It's an 80-20% rule, right? For 80% in your comfort zone, for 20% a challenge. And every time you're going to grow 20% at a time. Because if it's 100% challenging, with for example, me doing, I don't know, 100 pull-ups, in five, in, in five years, I've done zero. I'm just going to die. But... Let's say, okay, I'm comfortable to do one pull-up. Let's increase to 20% and I'll do like one and a half pull-up, right? Okay, that's progress. Second day, I'll try two, three, and you get the idea, right? Incremental progress. Uh, sometimes there is leaps of progress when you're going to get this aha moment. But honestly, further you go in your art career, fewer of them you're going to see because most of those aha moments is like, oh, I learned value, oh, I learned color, and you learned the tools. Those are easy. Those are easy. Those are just theory you have to understand and then implement it in your life. The hard part is actually using the tools because everyone can have a chainsaw. Everyone can, you know, have a, you know, I don't know, a sword, and I don't know, I'm going to use a sword maybe in a cool Viking way and protect my family, but another person is going to, I don't know, swing it in the air and then accidentally, you know, impale themselves or something. Someone's going to use a chainsaw to, I don't know, to become uh, a new person from a horror movie, and another person can, I don't know, do a work of art in a, in a freaking log. You, you see what I'm going with this. Okay. When you, okay, you are in your comfort zone 80% of the time, 20% you're improving. What's the next thing? Well, raise good questions. And when you find an answer to them, document it, okay? Because when we're working on our... How many times you had a question and then you had an answer for it when you were, let's say, working on your giant Cintiq or, or a little tab, I don't know. And then you're like, oh, what's this thing? You had, a, you had a question, you answered it on some kind of like YouTube video, right? And you're like, oh, that's cool. And you implement it in a painting and then you forget about it. I say this, I have, let's say, I have a documentation system. I just have my own Discord channel where I have a bunch of forums where I document stuff that are useful for me. And on YouTube, I do the same thing. When I, when I, when I see a piece of information that's interesting, I like, oh, I answered my question and then I catalog it right away. So then when an answer appears again, I can you know, re-answer it really, really quickly because it's my, in my catalog. This system is called Second Brain. I can explain it a little bit later in my other videos. It's a very important thing to have for every artist who wants to achieve anything, in my opinion, because cataloging your, in, your information and then applying it and then actually living it is really, really important, okay? Another thing that, I'm, that I meant about raising the right questions, right, is eliminate the bad ones. What I mean, am I good enough? Am I going to make it? Why this painting sucks? You know, I'll never do that. Do I have the talent? Those are useless questions. They're like, absolutely like, wh where, where are they leading? Why do, why do you suck at art? Well, it, I don't know. Happens. I'm sorry. Like, what kind of questions are those? And we are guilty. I'm guilty of that. Am I worthy of this freelance job in my day rate? What kind of question is that, Misha? Go do your freaking job. Ask questions. How can I make this lighting better? Is my value structure correct? Uh, am I inspired enough? Am I rested enough? See, you have unconstructive questions when you're doing your personal project. 
and constructive. They actually make your life easier. So eliminate, and you have to be conscious of that. It's almost like looking at your brain from a bird's eye view. Be your best friend, be your best buddy, be your best hype man, right? Observe your own thoughts, and like a real friend, just eliminate and chop off the bad questions and then focus on the good ones. How can I push this painting further and what can I do to improve it? Can I send it to my friend? Can I send it to uh, my half artist server for feedback? You see where I'm going with it? Raise good questions and when you find an answer to them, document it. This is actual useful battle-ready knowledge that is within you forever, right? Because if you're going to have a bunch of questions that help you get your painting to the next level, your personal project, and then you have a bunch of questions that are useless and you know they're useless, you're going to focus on those ones. You're going to document everything to one place and you'll know how your brain works. Not only from a mentality point of view, but also from, you know, um, you know, information point of view in terms of like actual knowledge and fundamentals on values and all of that stuff. All right. You have all of that. You're painting. Everything's good. You 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 are excited. You know your why. You're raising the right questions. You are filtering the life through uh, through your own perspective as an artist, and you are you know you you are implementing everything and you evolving your own uh, artistic voice. What's next? Well, you'll get excited. You love what you're doing, and then you channel all of the emotions into your projects. But then. And slowly, the excitement goes, goes down. Shh. Things start being less interesting. You know, the idea is not, is not so good anymore that you think, you know, and how to deal with that? Well, to not, to burn, not to burn up, you need to light up yourself some more, okay? I'm not sure if that makes sense, right? Not to burn up, you need to light up a little bit more. How do you do it? Uh, you share your passion. You practice telling about your project and you adjust according to some feedback, you know. It will fire you up and possibly others too because if you share your... Man, I remember... I remember... <laughs> my wife hates that. I talk about my Lumber Saga project all the time. Like freaking people in taxi, people in the airport, people in the, in the gas stations. They all know that I have a freaking project about <laughs> Vikings and aliens, you know. Or like my friends at the rock gym I'm like i'm almost like a kind of like a messed up jehovah witness or something do you want to hear about <laughs> my project you know why because when you practice saying those things when you practice talking about your project you remind yourself why you do it in the first place another person is like oh yeah that's cool dude yeah yeah uh what about that what about this oh, oh I, and then and then uh, the, you know the aliens crashed in the viking world long time ago and oh then what happened and you're like ooh, ooh, ooh. and it, it feels awesome right when you actually share with another person and that's why it's really important some people say that you know there's there's this um <laughs> famous idea in self-help uh you know environment and you know i don't you know self-help youtube is, is is very oversaturated and horrible advice and people don't actually live what they preach they say don't tell about your plans to anybody no you know sigma male you know grind said you know disappear for a year and never tell anybody because when you talk when you talk about your plans and about your projects your brain feels like it's already complete and you're not, you're not gonna do it but i say opposite right when you talk to other people you ignite their passion and you ignite your own passion and you come back and you're like you know what i'm awesome my project is cool you know and of course share your project with the right people and usually you need to find your tribes like one of my tweets were like you know find your tribe that can you know encourage the right behavior in you and you be careful who you share your project with because if you're not a strong person the feedback could be harsh right? And then if it's harsh, you should disagree with it and understand why you disagree with it, right? And then you will, again, adjust accordingly. You will see like what people have questions towards the projects, like what questions do they have towards the project? And you adjust accordingly. You fire up yourself. You fire up maybe another artist by sharing your project. You're like, you know what? That's so cool that you're doing your own personal project. Let me do one too, right? Or let me share mine. And that's our responsibility as artists. You know, the other day, you know, let me let me see I can, if I can find let me see if I can find uh, this little little note that I wrote to myself uh, about creativity and sharing. 
I'm sure if I can find it. Do 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 do. Plus, we're gonna have a little kind of little break while I do that because you're probably a little bit tired of listening to me, or maybe not. <laughs> Something about a dance. Something about a dance and creativity. See, I'm trying to find my ideas in my own sketchbook. Okay, I found it. All right, you you ready for some poetry, guys? Uh, so the saying goes like this: If you can inspire or share your spark with others, do it. It is your responsibility. World of creative people is like a beautiful dance. We'll all take turns leading in it, and we need time to recharge. Let others, and when we need time to recharge, let others take over until you feel it's your turn to to share the spark again. All right, I didn't write, I didn't read it right, but you get the gist of it. Okay, if you're not gonna say that it's beautiful, I'm gonna ban you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm kidding. But you get the idea, right? When we have our own personal projects, it, it's like it's like we're having a dance, right? And then sharing your spark with other people, it's like taking the lead. And other people are looking at you while you're doing your personal project, and they get inspired. But then when you get tired, when you get tired, whoops, when you get tired, you go and you stand on the side side benches. And the other couple or just, you know, other people, or maybe this is me on a dance ball, just like doing woohoo. Uh, the other people take take the lead and then they inspire you because you watch them do their project. And then imagine if everybody had a project and everybody was passionate about them. It would have been just a beautiful sight to see because everyone is sharing their spark with each other and sharing their passions and, and sharing their projects and how their project uh, helped them to deal with their life. And it could be an amazing thing. We could inspire each other. It could be this endless engine of inspiration basically right so that's why you should share it and practice telling about your projects so you can get feedback get yourself fired up and get other people's to fired up see how important this is just imagine if everybody did it right so let's do let's let's say you do that for a while you do your project for a while you do multiple of them over time patterns will emerge of favorite things that you like doing in your project and you should remember those. Remember those. Those are your strong suits. You'll be monetizing those later on as an artist while working on the weaker sides of yourself par parallel to that, right? What I'm trying to say with this is that over time, your favorite things will emerge. For me, it was I hate rendering. I didn't like you know, this and that. I didn't like designing that much. I loved composition. I liked I liked uh, coming up with a story. I liked blocking in local colors. I liked thinking about uh, lighting setups. And that was my strong suit. And I monetized it. How? I became a color key artist. I found, I found out that there's a profession like that as a color key artist. But I doubled down on those things that I liked, right? And you're going to have the same thing when you're going to have your own personal project. And that's only possible when you're going to have a personal project. Right? Did I convince you that personal project is really important? Did I say personal project enough in this sentence? <laughs> anyway, sorry guys. Um, yes, patterns will emerge and you'll understand what you're good at and what you're bad at. And you double down on things that you're good at. You find where it could be useful. Maybe there's gonna be one skill or maybe two skills that you're bad at, but it'll be complementary to the ones that you have already that you're doubling down on. And then you will find a profession. So for me it was, you suck at rendering, or you don't like it, I guess. I can render if I want to. Now, back in the days, I couldn't. Now I can. See, I leveled up my weak side. But you suck at rendering. It's not interesting to you. You don't like concept art because you don't like designing and polish stuff. But you like story. You like composition, like cinematography. You like color scenarios, mood, atmosphere, time of day. You love animation. You like storyboarding. Where all of this overlaps. And I didn't know at the time. I didn't have my own Misha who said, hey, here's a list of all the professions in the industry and here's an art camp <laughs> for free on YouTube. Right? And I had to find out. And I found the color scripting. And I monetized it. And I became good at it. And for the last six years, that's all been earning my money with. But when I started leveling up my weak spots, I started being hired as a concept artist sometimes, sometimes as a visual development artist. But that would have not happened. You see? You with me? That would have not happened if I didn't invest my time into my own personal voice as an artist in my own projects. 
okay? It would have just not happened. I would have not discovered myself. I would have not discovered what I'm good at, and I would have not monetized it, okay? All right. And last two notes. We're almost at the end. We're almost at the end. We almost made it. Personal projects and your own artistic voice as a creative is a lifestyle, okay? You need to create a routine of capturing ideas, filtering life through your own unique artistic worldview, and then transform that experience into your personal work so people can see you in your art. I don't care who you study. I don't care if it's Nevin Amundsen or, 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 I don't know, some other, I don't know, Karol Kapinski, uh, you know, Loish or anybody else who you really, really like. They are they. You are you. Wow. Deep thoughts. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, right? You and only you can be the best version of yourself. And it's your responsibility, in my opinion, you know, uh, you know, before the creator himself, before God himself or you yourself is to become the best version, the best artistic version of yourself. So then people hire you for your interpretation of life. And to become that, to become that, you need personal projects. You need to invest into your artistic voice. You need to invest into your creativity and make you know, this filtering of life and then transforming into the artistic thing and generate an idea and actually take an action your lifestyle because if you're not going to do that if you're just going to dabble in it for many many months or many many years you're not going to achieve anything you might you know get a job here and there but if you really want to grow and get amazing opportunities and meet amazing people because again like-minded people meet and they work together because they value each other's input that's how i found you know my directors you know, my, my Joe Spatterford and my own Borja Pena and, you know, Toby Tribelha and Philippa Hansen, people that I work with a lot and, you know, the, considering them my friends. That's only possible if you invest into your own, in your own voice as a creative, in your own projects. All right. So to recap and final thoughts, right? Resonate with something. When you resonate with that idea or emotion, capture it. Distill it into, you know, into little, little Lego parts and then implement those into your artwork. Remember that ideas without actions are just ideas and you're not a thinker and you're not a professional student. You're an artist. Art and actual physical activity and ritual of putting things into a material world is as important as the idea itself. Idea by itself is just an idea. You dedicate special time to those activities that I just mentioned before, and you treat it as an actual job, okay? When you're doing this, when you're doing your personal project, it's not you doodling and, and, and doing things for fun, even though it is fun. It's your job, okay? You are actually in the industry while you do it. There's no other way to say it because the only difference from whatever I just stated, and your actual freelance job is you'll get paid. That's it. That's it. That's the only difference that's gonna that's gonna be in your life if you're gonna run your personal project seriously, okay? Because if you do everything that I say here and you implement that into your life, you'll get good portfolio pieces that speak out to the directors, that speak out to potential HRs, and that stand out from the crowd. Okay, people will actually see your own voice as a creative in those and they will see it and they will they will hire you. Maybe not for big money at first, but that's a stepping stone. Okay, do you understand me? I hope so. Okay, because this is very important. You're not forever students. You're not professional students. You are artists. You're, you're in Valhalla for artists, Viking warriors who are investing their time into their own stories to make this world a better place, to deal with trauma, with their own life, then make other people's life easier and then and, and then bring beauty into this world with your own creative voice. If this doesn't sound awesome to create a personal project for, I don't know how to convince you. You have no heart and you should not be an artist. <laughs> All right, that's it for today. I have no final thoughts. I'll get you, I'll get you a little bullet uh, note thing for the entire talk if you want to. It will be linked somewhere. And time for... Um, uh, questions and answers and Q&A. 
So, uh, yeah. So hopefully this was useful. You know what? I'm going to bring you into the OBS now so people can actually see what you guys are typing on and actually can see what's going on. Um, yeah. Whoops. Uh, yeah. <laughs> my heart, my soul. <laughs> I hope you guys, I hopefully this was, hopefully this was useful. Um, I really hope so. Uh, let me, let me just do this like this. All right. This is not working. Let me do this like that. Ding. All right. Questions, guys. Questions. I am, I am ready. And for people who are, uh, you know, watching this on YouTube, feel free to, you know, ask your own questions and, um, or thoughts, if it was useful or not. If you think that somebody could benefit from this lecture, please send it them away. Um, and you have to understand that we do this every week, uh, a couple of times a week, actually. And um, yeah, and I, I prepare these lectures and I don't pull them out of my butt, out of nowhere, right? I, I have a specific channel in here uh, that I usually say, hey, people, please, uh, you know, share your thoughts on, like post your questions. And for this lecture, I just asked, what do you guys want me to lecture on? And I just prepared the lecture on personal projects because, you know, I care for my Vikings. So, uh, yeah. Anyways, Q&A session. Uh, if you guys want, you can actually, uh, um, what you can do is you can raise your hand. I can pull you in the voice channel. Uh, that's if you don't shine, if you want to, you know, ask the question with your own voice. But if you don't want to do it with your own voice, you can actually um, do it in a text channel. And again, it's Q&A. It's Q&A time. I want to be useful to you guys. And for people who are watching on YouTube, again, be part of our awesome community because you can actually ask a professional artist who actually worked in the industry for a long time and thought and thought and thought about this stuff for a really long time. And I'm here to make your life easier, okay? So you don't have to make all the mistakes that I did in, in, in my art journey, okay? So we're going to dedicate 10 to 15 minutes to this, I think, uh, on to gathering all the Q&A stuff. And yeah, then we're going to wrap it up. <laughs> uh, hopefully, guys, you made notes because I'm going to tell you this, that uh, this information is useless, just like with studying. If you didn't capture the ideas that resonated with you, you didn't write them down in a place that you can find them again. Uh, the whole thing on second brain and system and documenting, I'll probably record a separate video because I have elaborate mechanisms that I use time to time that really, really help me out. Thank you for the lecture. Thank you, Dada. This, is there a homework for this lecture? Sure. Do your own personal projects. You you spank a doodles or I'll ban you. Okay. It's been very motivating. I've been procrastinating and losing myself a lot in the portfolio process lately. And this lecture will most likely help get me on track. Thank you so much. No problem. Okay, guys. Questions right now. I'm going to... Okay, count to five and there's no questions. We're going to shut off the stream again. <laughs> I'm doing this for you guys. Do it for yourself. Don't be shy. Don't be shy. Uh, write down the questions. Hey, Augustus wants to do. Okay, here you go. I invite you, Augustus. Hey, my dude. What's up? You can speak now. Your microphone. Hey. Say hello to everybody, Agustuns. Everybody say hello to Agustuns. You're lagging a little bit, my dude. Uh, now I can hear you. Um, specifically, like, I wanted to get your thoughts on like what a personal project should be. I know you developed the whole story, but somebody's like 
I know, for example, just one. Very simple for we have like many different projects, shorter mm -hmm. projects, long projects, just projects or everything. Oh, oh okay. Uh, but dude, you've been lagging through the entire time you've been asking the question. So I'm probably going to ask you to write it in text and then okay. send it in the chat and I'm going to send oh, you down. Exactly. But thank you for uh, being, you're the first person who went up here. So uh, good job, dude. No. I'll just type it now. Okay. Okay. Yep. He's cutting out a little bit, guys. So uh, sorry. That happens. Put me in after coach. Okay, you have to raise your questions. Okay, here you go. Hey. Can you hear me? Yeah, I was out critical. Yo, yo. yo, uh, yo. I'm saying hello from the UK. Uh, I just want to say thanks for like all your videos and lectures and stuff. Um, I actually oh, watched one of your um, lectures like yesterday while I was at work. And then I found that you guys have like a Discord and stuff and I joined straight away. Anyways, so. For my question, mm -hmm. um, let's say like you've got this idea and yeah. you love the idea, you've captured it, yeah. you, you know, you've done a bit of research, taken a bit of notes and you've made out this plan on how you're going to execute it, right? Mm -hmm. And now you're starting off with this project and you're getting all these ideas, you're um, raising these questions and stuff. Mm -hmm. You come across a specific idea and yep. it's just not working. Like okay. you've, been sh you've been frustrated with it for a while. You've been trying... Um, loads of different kinds of things yeah. and you just don't really know what to do with it but you really 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 want to make it work right yeah um i know for like some some writers and maybe some like other like directors and artists that it, there's this concept called killing your darlings right where yep. it's something where you personally you really want it to work it's like really cool to you but yep. in the context of what you're doing it just doesn't work and I'm afraid of that. <laughs> I'm very afraid of that, especially with like a personal project. And yeah. it's like, I don't know what I'd actually do in that situation. Because if I have to just drop the idea in general, I just feel bummed out. And I'm not sure what I'd do next. Yeah. Or like, yeah. if maybe there's like an alternative thing that I do, but yeah. it's not what I would want. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 So you're basically having a an artist block. It's it's you're banging your head against the wall. And it's not working, right? So there's multiple ways to fix this problem. So number one, let's say if it's a painting, let's say if it's not a story, it's just a painting, right? Sometimes people fall in love with the, uh, with the concept. They fall in love with their brush strokes and they don't want to give up on it. But my rule of thumb is this, if nothing is happening on my page, for the next 15 to 25 minutes and I have, okay, after some experience, let's say one hour to two hours, let's say nothing changed substantially and you are lacking progress within first or two hours of you working on something completely, that means you're doing something wrong. So either the idea is not there, you don't understand what the idea is about or your approach is wrong and you should do another three thumbnails or another four thumbnails. That's in terms of like approach to, let's say an actual painting. Right. If we're talking about a big project, let's say, right, and then you you've come to a dead stop, you probably overworked yourself, and the idea needs just some breathing room. I usually leave that side of a story or that side of a project for a while to lay down in my folders, right? Because I'm like, you know what? I kind of I kind of lost it, but I was there. I've done it like 30%, let's say. And there's something missing. And I don't know what it is. And I tried everything that I could. You know, start, stop banging your, your head against the wall. Just take a break, take a breather, and maybe start on another idea. And actually, in my opinion, uh, one of the best ways for juggling your pro project is actually having two or three parts of your project that you're working on. So for example, two or three locations, two or three storylines, two or three characters that have their own storylines. Because when you get tired of one, you jump on another one. And while you're working on that one, actually the solution comes by itself from the first one because your brain is actually working in autopilot. So actually working on projects is as important 
as well actually taking breaks from projects is actually as important as working on them right because sometimes we just oversaturate our brain with useless information you know that aha moment when you're like in the showers or on the walk when information just assembles itself a goes to b and you like you know what to do that comes because you just you freed up some of your ram space you know you you freed up uh, the you know the the processor and now you can actually you know tackle the uh, the project easier and then the solution will find itself so yeah so number one if it's a painting and then you are stuck for a long time and then nothing is happening for the next 15 to 20 to like two hours in that painting that means you fell in love with the brushstrokes not the idea and you're trying to make whatever is on the canvas work right that's happened to me a lot of times like oh but i committed so so many hours to this you know crappy sketch throw it away it's always faster the second time and then uh you you'll see that hey it's a good thing that i threw out my first painting and i kept the idea but now things are going much much faster so always be conscious of Am I progressing forward or I'm on the same part? Like, you know, a lot of people, when they have trouble with their painting, they will go and start rendering. That's why we have a lot of crappy paintings with really good render. There's no story. There's no composition in there. It's because people, they're like, well, I'm stuck. I don't know what to do. So I'm going to do the only thing that I know is to render, like, you know, this <laughs> this grass in the, in the right hand corner, you know, because that's the only thing that they can take their hands on. Right. And <clears throat> usually that's wrong. And the second, again, uh, have multiple projects or multiple parts of the project going at the same time. So when you hit the wall, you're like, you know what? I'm going to take a break from this story. I'm going to take a break from this painting. I'm going to start a new one because the solution will emerge eventually. Right. And then the third one, remember when I said, don't make it too easy, don't make it too hard. Maybe the project is too big, too vast. Right. So if you're going to be talking about, like, you know, the, you know, the, 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 <laughs> the economic system and like, you know, the next Game of Thrones thing and your brain just doesn't work maybe in that way yet, downscale a little bit. So if, it, if the story was like super huge and has like 12 characters, right, or something like that, um, just dumb it down, simplify it, make it about the same thing. So make the simple statement the same, right, but just talk about your story or your project in simpler terms because you probably could have overcomplicated it and you just don't know what to do. It's out of your comfort zone. Again, you have to improve 20% at a time when I said in the lecture. So yeah, and it's kind of cool to have actually a British person in a, in the chat. Uh, most of the time it's like Russians, Ukrainians, and then uh, some Uga Booga country. I'm looking at you, Marco. <laughs> All right, I'm kidding. No, <laughs> <laughs> Marco is was it? I knew it. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. Is that helpful? Do you have any more questions? That's that's actually like really really helpful. I didn't think of the idea of actually like um, going going ahead and doing a different part of the project if you're just stuck on one thing, um, and giving yourself time to you know take a break take a break from it all. Um, and then work on work on something else, and then come back on to yeah. it um, with a fresh mind. Yeah. I mean, it makes sense, and yeah. I've definitely heard that kind of advice before, but just not in the context of like you know painting uh, a personal project. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah, there's also like maybe the maybe the project is actually just a bit um, too big for like what you're trying what you're trying to do right now and maybe you just need to scale it down a little bit but before like hearing that kind of advice i would have kind of just taken that as oh the project's too big i just gotta scrap it and just no 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 don't scrap it because the thing is look yeah so for example with my lumber saga project i have do i have multiple let's say times or, uh, or uh time periods i have before the aliens crashed during so the technology evolution of like vikings and flying drug cars and all that stuff and then post so the like, kind of like uh, sci-fi <laughs> viking apocalypse slash ragnarok right and then sometimes i jump into like the past the present the future and then when i work on one character i'm like you know what this is super cool because i think this connects to that painting a really long time ago and then I'm like oh okay okay so I, I leave that and I go back and I work on that and then when I'm in the past I'm like well this would lead to this so this would lead to like this uh kind of like animal evolving or you know uh technology being in there or weapon or character or son of a son of a son you know what I'm saying right it's called associative yeah. thinking and when you're working on different parts of your project uh you could really encounter some 
interesting story beats and solutions that you would have never thought of if you were just trying to bang your head on the wall and come up with the best idea here on the spot. So that's why you need to live in your project a little bit and take a break and then take a breather, take a walk. Again, recharging is as important and resting as being productive, guys. Okay, so this is part of that. Um, yeah, so hopefully that was mm. useful, dude. Yeah, <laughs> thank you so much, man. That's it for me. Yeah, awesome. Thanks, man. Uh, yeah, yeah, awesome question, dude. And thanks for uh, coming coming in and, and not being afraid of, uh, you know, because most people are like, ah, Misha's scary. But uh, yeah, yeah. Thanks, dude. Thanks, Critical. No worries. Right, I think we have one more one. I think who waved? Someone waved, and I missed it. No, nobody else waved. Okay, <laughs> Booga Booga Country, <laughs> Portugal. Yes. Um, yeah, and Americans. The concept of creating monetization government is hard in a project. Yes. Uh, when you. Okay, I suggest people who wish to type a question to initiate. Yeah, please. If you have a question, do Q or question in big letters before this. Uh, so the easier for me to find them and read them. Yeah, okay. Uh, let's see. There's another. Was there a question? Kusha. What do you think is a good time to take a break from your current project? All right. So the good indicator is uh, you feel tired, you feel exhausted, you feel more urged to procrastinate than usual. Right, and nothing appears on your canvas for for the last one hour, two hours. You know that you know that feeling when you have one brush stroke on your uh, you know, uh, when you have one brush stroke on your on your canvas and you're looking at it for like three hours. It's time to take a break, recalibrate, come up with a new victory plan, maybe go for sleep, and then try to tackle it the next time. So yeah, it's it's when your you when your when your brain is a mush, and again. It's better to go and procrastinate and, and give you yourself a permission to procrastinate. And that's actually called rest because uh, you're going to rest and you're like, you know what? I'm going to go and play video games for three hours in the evening, then go to bed and then in the morning I'll tackle it. Then to support an illusion of procrast uh, productivity when you're like, I'm kind of working on the project, but at the same time I have like three tabs open and I'm watching podcasts and uh, TikToks on my phone at the same time and I'm playing like Hearthstone in the back, right? All, you, all you're doing is just kidding yourself. Don't do that. Uh, just take a break and yeah. All right. Um, okay, there's more in the beginning. Basically, when you're doing a personal project, should we focus on storyboards, character, or specific things we want to narrow our portfolio, or should we work on something more general like work? The full story. So, again, when I'm talking about personal project, it could be anything. It could be story related. It could be big visual development related. If people are confused, you can use my art camp. It's free on YouTube. It's over, I don't know how many hours, like over hundred hours of content there on actually how to run your project from start to beginning. Every aspect of the project, character design, environment design, a uh, little bit of storyboarding even, a uh, little bit of script writing even. It has everything. That's if you want to create your project almost like an animation project. But then projects could be different. Let's say if there's character designers here, you're just going to create a team of characters. You don't have to do backgrounds for them, right? It's your projects. There's going to be storyboard artists. So when I'm talking about personal project, it's anything that you want. But if you're like me, I like to do everything. So if you want to do everything, just go check out my art camp in this YouTube uh, channel. Uh, it has everything in there from 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 zero to hero you can dabble in every aspect of it but remember when i told you told you guys that at some point you will figure out what your strong suits are when you're beginning it's nice to have a personal project and have hands-on experience on everything that's how you, the fastest way to figure out what you're good at and then monetize it right All right question what is better for self-development one long-term big personal project or many short-term projects thank you uh that's from eugene uh i don't know it depends on you know, what kind of person you are. Uh, I personally say, for me, it's both. So I have a big universe. And within that universe, I have different little projects, different little characters, different little stories. So it's like I am working on a big, giant project. But at the same time, I have little parts of it as kind of like side quests or side plots and all of that stuff. It depends on what kind of person you are. So if you want to experience, you know, you want to be in a cowboy setting and then in a, like a steampunk setting and then you know, in a Viking setting, then it makes sense for you to do what? Well, to do multiple projects short term. Sure, do it. Uh, if you are a person who is like, you know what, I have the big vision, I want to do that, do a big project. Again, you know, 
do whatever you want to do and you're inspired to do. Okay. Uh, I think that's the best way. Like whatever tickles your heart, do it. There's no wrong or right answer for this. They're both good. For example, Lumbersag, you kind of do everything long in one long form project and that works for characters for sure. Is that what we should do for characters in Thorybird as well, for example, or should we make a lot of smaller projects? Yeah, same thing. Uh, de depends on you. Um, so aside from my personal project, that was like environments, characters, all of that. I also did speed paints but I, because, you know, I did little mini challenges, which is also personal projects, I would say, right? I want to do 12 or 15 paintings in a month. Remember when we had Vikings and Giants challenge when we did a bunch of keyframes? That was my personal project, right? I do like, and personal projects are there to kind of gamify and make your portfolio building much, much, much funner, okay? So again, there's no right or wrong answer. You need to ask yourself who I want to be, answer the big why, and ask yourself, what's going to be the best personal project that is most similar to actually me working on something in the industry? And you just do that. And you just connect to it on an emotional level. When I talk about personal project, I'm not, again, I'm not trying to turn you guys into me. I'm just trying to turn you guys into you, who you want to be, okay? And that's the hard part about freelance and being a free person and being uh, a thinking artist, right? Because the questions are hidden within yourself. All I can do is just ask the right questions and if you answer them for themselves you will get the answer okay there's no right or wrong uh is it like narrowing down an expected result like downsize from animation to keep it or down to a few illustration and concept yep don't get sucked into sunk cost fallacy julia you're too, too, too big too big brain for me my russian brain can't grasp uh right okay more questions there are like 38 more that was my question. Misha, if you want to work in the preparation part of animation palm, should I study illustration or animation? You should study both. I gotta say you guys this. Anything that and like I'm not sure about preparation, like pre-production maybe, pre-production part of animation, like designing backgrounds, designing this, this, and that, right? So I'm gonna say this: every aspect of your life is gonna benefit from studying anything visual. So I'm gonna say this: the, the fundamentals are very easy to grasp, very hard to master. But then other fundamentals are very beneficial. So if you're going to do storyboarding and you're going to just know how it works, if you're going to do script writing, if you're going to be doing everything, you're going to be learning at 100x speed because there's a lot of things that colorate or you know have similarities in the fundamentals and approaches in different fields. So I say this, know who you want to be let's say storyboard artist a pre-production artist for let's say environment artist study the fundamentals on that find the best person on art station or best courses or youtube and all of that stuff or just go through my art camp it has everything in there uh and then ask yourself a question what other fields could benefit me in this profession so with animation if you want to be uh, like a pre-production for animation you should study illustration and animation because honestly Illustration has focal points, animation has focal points. Animation just has different contexts, which is, you know, images are in motion for how many seconds the, you know, the image is going to last on the screen. So you have to, again, different, same theory, right? We as artists manipulate people's focal points or people's attention on an image, different context, animation in motion, illustration not. So an animation can get away with like, maybe not rendering something. With illustration, maybe you're not going to get away with it, but again, context is it league of legends splash art or is it going to be like don't starve splash art that has very sketchy things that don't have to be rendered again no there's no wrong answer uh but i mean the right answer is probably study everything after you master the fundamentals of the profession from a person that you trust already does what you want to do in the industry All right misha you missed this one no i didn't all right uh, how to choose a project that is that's matched your skills and has more chances to get completed anytime soon? Well, you start a project, see if you can complete it. If it's too hard, you make a project even easier. If that's too hard, you make it even easier. And then you do that. And then you just increase the difficulty as much as you can. And that's it. Uh, you know if it's hard, if you know that it's hard to do. Right, just need to be super transparent with yourself that 
uh, well, I'm not actually procrastinating and I'm just, I'm just, I just, and I'm not being a lazy bum. Everything is just so overwhelming. This is too much. That means you have to dumb it down. Okay, question. You mentioned that consistency is important when you're doing personal projects works, but what happens when we don't have any ideas, mood, or inspiration to work on a certain period of time? Should a personal project supposed to have a purposeful reason or, of doing or can it become a mindless act of doing? Like, does everything supposed supposed to have a reason to, to be made or it can be loose and no reason? It's a really interesting question. What I described here is an axiom, right? Which is like the best way that this could happen in an ideal way that we should feel every day. I'm going to tell you this. You're not going to always feel the way that I describe things right now. You're not going to always feel like doing your project. You're not always going to be inspired. But when you do, everything goes well. But if nothing goes well, you have to create systems. You have to create discipline to then get back into the into the mood of you know, perfect, you know, project making environment. So what I can recommend for you is always analyze why and how you're feeling, why you think feeling that because discipline and consistency sometimes will get you back to the feeling of inspired because when you push through, you know, I'm not feeling like it, blah, blah, blah. You, you, you drop for an hour for two and then the result is getting better and better and better. And you're like, you know what? This is actually awesome. I'm getting inspired again. And discipline and consistency will get us through those periods of uninspired and back to inspired, right? You have to understand who you are. You, you, you need to know how you function, how you think to get you back into the inspiration mood. Again, inspiration sometimes over, over, you know, overrated and it definitely inspiration is not always there. And you have to learn how to work through that because in my freelance in career, like, I'm going to tell you this. If I was working only when I was inspired, I would be working like three days a week or maybe one day a week or maybe, I don't know, four days a year maybe. I don't know. But the thing is, I taught myself how to inspire myself and gain inspiration from my work and through consistent mindset. Uh, not everything needs to have this kind of high and mighty reason. Uh, sometimes the reason could be I just want to have fun right here right now and make something fun and that's 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 good enough um, I'm pretty sure that your art shouldn't be always mindless there's mindless aspects to it when you're going to be start drawing and painting and just rendering you just mindlessly do it but the core the heart behind your art behind your idea and everything else should be highly calculated and highly good right uh Okay, what happens when we start? Okay, I don't know where to post my personal projects. Art station, Instagram, anything that you can get your hands on, post it there because like we're going to be talking about communication and networking soon on this week. That's another topic of lecture for this week and I'll answer those questions. All right, uh, what happens when we start to lose interest in what we're doing? Should we take the initiative to reignite the interest? Yep, or see there was something else to find your in or cool, is that a question or what is important for the individual? Uh, it's it both. You should initiate, reignite protocol and interest and seek something else also that is interesting and cool if re reignition doesn't, 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 doesn't work. Your job as an artist is to keep yourself entertained and keep yourself interested. It's not other people's jobs. And that's what we do when we procrastinate on YouTube, when we watch movies, we're trying to find those things when we go wow that is super cool right all right uh thank you rico for uh doing for listening to all my lectures i need to continue with this thing that isn't working because i've put so much time into it oh, okay uh don't forget to leave the link to the camp lectures blah 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 oh night owl here's invitation hey oh, hello hello hey what's up man uh, nothing much. Uh, this is pretty good. Um, so uh, my question revolves around uh, having too many ideas kind of flooding in at once, like uh, mm -hmm. associative thinking working against you. Yeah. So yeah. like if I have a project and, uh, you know, I really like it, it's yep. cool, but I keep getting ideas yep. and it keeps becoming a different project. Yep. How I do I that. like 
how do I like keep it so that it doesn't just become a new project and then I have a whole pile of yeah, like yeah, 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 yeah. Oh man, I you have no idea how much I understand you. Like when I go on, I I had a I had a little story. So I have a bunch of colleagues that have personal projects, and we they're professionals. One is an animator for uh, Arcane season two mm -hmm. and one is Toby Turbelha uh, and we talk about different things and my problem is I'm like oh, oh, oh what about this idea and I go on a rant <laughs> for like 15 minutes about oh no 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 this one is better and what they yeah. say is like Misha slow down and then the always the question is what's your simple statement what are you trying to say so for example my Lumber Saga project is this I have again I have boundaries so Lumber Saga is story about broken people who are trying to get their lives together right simple statement what my project is about Right? And then everything else has to support that story and everything else. So, and, and another thing is your ideas and associative thinking seems cool right now in the moment when you think about it because like a bunch of images flash in your head and you're watching a movie and you're experiencing all those emotions and you don't know what to do with mm -hmm. them, right? And you're like, oh, I want to capture it all. But then when you actually write down, so you need a brain dump. This is called brain dumping. When you write down, sketch out all of your ideas and capture them in a picture, and then you're gonna say, you know what? I'm gonna return later to you because you are a very nice, uh, you're a very nice idea. Again, capturing ideas by its balls, right? But then leaving it out there and saying, okay, you're not my priority right now. My priority right now is this main storyline or this thing. Again, projects have different aspects of them. Sometimes you're in a blue sky phase, right? when you're just trying to figure out what your story is about, right? And mm -hmm. it's, not, it's not bad to go all over the place because I'm going to say this. If you're thinking that way, that is a great visual development brain because when you're going to be on calls with directors or anybody else, you, you can go far and wide. You're like, what about this random hamster who can become like an assassin later on because he, you don't know, uh, he became a sniper or something like that. Or what about this yeah. part of the world? What about this? And you can go super wide in all of your ideas and your associative thinking can come up with many, 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 many little stories and many, many projects, right? That is great. But what you need to work on right now is uh, curation of those ideas. Does this idea really have something in it? Is it just a cool moment for the sake of coolness? Or, or does it connect back or, to the, the simple statement? Or right? does it connect back to the simple statement? Yes. If it connects to the simple statement, you keep it because it's your story structure. Everything else is fluff. Fluff can be always added later on, right? You know, the VFX, the explosions, and then they fight in the script where it happens, right? <laughs> you can keep it at all, but you have to understand what is my simple statement of this story? What was the initial thing that connected me to this thing, right? And then when you yeah. understand it for yourself, then everything else, you can still brain dump. Please collect your ideas. Do not let them die. Again, collect them, but then curate them. I'm going to take this, please, and then this, please, and then this, please, because it supports my simple statement. Everything else, you know, season four <laughs> of my story <laughs> yeah. or something like that. You get me, right? Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. All right. That, that's, that's very helpful. All right, cool, cool. Any more questions? Uh, no, I think that's it. Thank you, Misha. Okay, no problem. No problem. Uh, thanks for coming out here, dude. Uh, yeah, I appreciate <laughs> thanks it. Thanks for having me. <laughs> yeah, no problem. No problem. All right. I think that's it. I think that's it. We're going to... Um, yeah, we're going to... Yeah, we're going to... We're going to... We're going to... We're going to... We're going to stop. We're done. We're done with today's lecture. I hopefully this was uh, helpful. And for people who want to relive this <laughs> experience, uh, it's going to be on my YouTube channel. Uh, for people who are watching on YouTube or watching here, please, um, when 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 the video goes live, you know, comment, subscribe, you know, uh, share your thoughts. Uh, we're a little community of artists who are trying to, you know you know, uh, make a difference in the visual development community and trying to make education and, you know, privileged information uh, accessible to all. So if you guys want to become a, a part of the Viking family, go join the Discord thing. Uh, yeah, and then we're having this thing every week during the week. So if you want to participate in it, please, uh, you're more than welcome to. 
Uh, yeah. All right. Thank you for sticking around, guys. And uh, yeah, that's the end of the lecture. Please invest time into your own personal projects because you are the next Disney. You are the next Pixar. You know, you are the next creative voices and the industry depends on it. Okay. That's your responsibility before yourself and God himself. <laughs> All right. See you, Vikings. Remember, Valhalla is for artists. We're going to win our creative careers. You know, we're going to win this battle against procrastination. We can do it. And that's it for today. Thanks for joining. And Michelle out. Yeah.